Welcome back to today, Rocket Science. South by Southwest is the crossroads of art, culture, and innovation for a week and a half each year in Austin. But science, technology, engineering, and math converge with artistry on stages across the country all year round. Frank Delella takes us to the Koran Theater in San Francisco, where students employed engineering to take on the challenge of performing on the stage of a theater undergoing restoration. It's an historic theater where countless plays and musicals got their start before gracing the Great White Way. And it's where these young actors and theater teachers are getting their start. The youth production of Andrew Lloyd Webber's School of Rock is the first production of the musical Off-Broadway. And it was put on entirely by students from the Oakland School for the Arts. These kids, 6th through 12th grade uh, from OSA, uh, come from really all different disciplines. So you've got certainly the musical kids and the theater kids, the vocals and the instrumentals, but we have kids from digital and design and production design and just uh, the full gamut. And to me what's so exciting, amazing, just the most blessed thing is how talented they are. The current theater is currently undergoing an ambitious restoration project which posed a challenge for students tasked at putting on this production. But director Michael Berry says a little science, technology, engineering, and math is all it took to get the show on the road. Students designed, engineered, and built the set on the stage of the theater. They're designing from, from the ground level up. It's a huge collaborative effort between them, the academics, and just the science that it takes to, uh, to you know, the mathematic equations, if you will, and, and all of that to, to create such a, a realistic uh, set from a vision. Uh, these kids are remarkable. And for the young actors? It was amazing, like really cool. I feel overwhelmed, but in the best way possible. Well, the students are definitely enjoying their time in the limelight. The opportunity to exercise real-world performance and technical experience sets the stage for a career in the arts. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Frank Delella. And live theater isn't alone in its embrace of science and technology. Filmmakers have historically used science and tech to tell stories and capture images in new and innovative ways. So it should come as no surprise that they're flirting with the latest in hot tech trends, drones. Our Michael Hertzenberg visits a drone manufacturer that's building the airborne camera bots, helping to capture angles never possible before. The Port of Brooklyn was once a gritty manufacturing hub. Now, new companies are moving in, combining technology and design in innovative ways. One startup literally is taking off. Founded by two NYU film students, Aerobo develops and builds drones. From engineering to production, you can hold the smallest in your hand. The largest weighs 55 pounds and can cost as much as $200,000. But you won't be able to get your hands on the controls. These are commercial drones made for aerial photography. It's a lot of fun. Only an FAA licensed pilot can operate them. You really can't make any mistakes. The three-year-old company flies the drones for clients, using them to inspect buildings, gather footage for news broadcasts, and even film movie scenes. It's easy to see the production value of a drone. It has complete mobility. It's not stuck on a tripod and gives you a bird's eye view of me and anything with a maximum altitude of 400 feet by law. As far as I know, we're the only people who are designing, who are engineering, and who are building drones in New York City. Their location is a bit of a hassle, but they say locating a robo here makes perfect sense. This is where the spiritual home uh, and, and headquarters of uh, many of the large networks is, and every movie studio has representation in New York as well. They say they film wherever the work takes them. And the next few months has them flying high on a half a dozen network TV shows and two blockbuster films. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Michael Hertzenberg. And students in New Jersey are taking their enthusiasm for drones to new heights and have big plans on how their homemade drones might lend a helping hand around town. At Columbia High School in Maplewood, New Jersey, students in this drone club are doing everything you expect and then some. They're learning how to build their own drones from the ground up, piece by piece. I never really knew how to solder. I've been a part of robotics, but um, soldering was more of an issue with uh, Drone Club. I spent, um, I don't know, three or four days trying to make sure that all my motors went in the right direction, some were spinning backwards. So it does take a lot of perseverance and time. 
Beyond learning STEM skills, what makes this after school drone club unique is what the students plan to do with the drones they're building. We are working on using our big drones to take, for example, uh, survey rooftops, to work with building maintenance to see if there's any damage or repairs that need to be done. It taps into the kind of things that we want kids to learn, how to build things, how to, instead of sitting in a classroom all day and writing notes, they can actually go construct something and see it work, and if it doesn't work, why doesn't it work, and try it again and do that. The kind of skills that you need in engineering or science, is, and it's a fun thing for them. And it's not just the teachers who are hoping that these skills help students take flight in their education and potential careers in STEM. It definitely has broadened my idea of like what I could do. Like I was before, I was kind of like just oh, like maybe I'll you know go into film, maybe I'll like like be a teacher, I don't know. But like now I'm like, okay, well I, I can do this, you know, like I can like be a scientist if I wanted to. It's definitely um, great for people to be aware that this is a viable option for them. And even looking further into the future, um, career-wise, this is definitely an option that people can pursue. Well, that is all for this episode of It Ain't Rocket Science. To learn more about Time Warner Cable's commitment to inspiring the next generation of problem solvers, visit connectamillionminds.com. And until next time, it's been a blast.